Welcome to Afra's Artifacts, where we do some archaeology of our own and dig into the queer side of Star Wars. I'm your host, Alia Morgane, and it's so great to have you here. Well, today we're talking about Esmel and Shireen from the Aftermath Trilogy. Remember my previous videos about Sinjar Rothvelis and Condor Kyle, also from the Aftermath Trilogy? Um, so, Esmel and Shireen are specifically in the books Aftermath and Aftermath Empire's End, which are the first and third books in the trilogy. And just as a reminder, this trilogy takes place immediately after Return of the Jedi. So the New Republic is in place and they're trying to figure out how in the heck they start um, running the galaxy after the fall of the Empire. So Esmel is Nora Wexley's sister and Shireen is her wife. And Nora Wexley. So, where is that name familiar from? Well, she is Snap Wexley, slash, his real name is Temin uh, Wexley's mom. And you'll remember Snap is a member of Poe's Black Squadron, played by Greg Grumberg in The Force Awakens and The Rise of Skywalker. And the cool thing is that although Esmel and Shireen are minor characters, they're not just background characters. They are very important to the story, because when Nora went off to fight with the Rebellion, she left Snap with Esmel and Shireen as his caretakers. And I think this is really cool because, yes, Esmel was her sister, but the fact that a character is entrusting their own child to lesbian aunts who don't have children of their own is pretty cool. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. So, characteristic-wise, Esmel is quite a bit older than her sister Nora. She's thin, reedy, pale as a ghost, and has long silver hair. She has a hydrodome where she grows small herbs like heartweed and scentsen seed, which enhances her motherliness, this gardening ability. And Shireen, on the other hand, is rounded, pillowy, has skin as dark as a handful of overturned soil, and has very short, curly hair. And a cool thing about Shireen is she's a peacemaker. She likes to diffuse rough situations. So it says, Shireen has the magical ability to make shushing feel gentle and welcome, soft and necessary. So, like I said, Snap was entrusted to their care, but he grows away from their care because, man, does that boy have an independent streak that goes for miles. And he starts doing things on his own by the age of 15. He moves out back to his old family um, homestead. And... Esmel and Shireen did love him and care for him as best they could, but he was just so independent and ready to be on his own and do his own thing. He started his own um, shop, sort of junk shop. He built his own droid, Mr. Bones, who's a super funny, awesome, kind of terrifying character. Um, so he, he did all these things on his own. And Nora is not very happy with this. She blames them for being incapable of caring for her son. And they're like, hey now, Nora, you're the one who left your own son of your own volition to go fight in a war. So they turn it on its head and they're like, come on now. Like, you really can't talk. And part of it of their being able to say something like that is that Esmel and Shireen are not all that gung-ho for the rebellion. It's not that they're Imperial sympathizers. They just are mostly ambivalent about the whole situation. So let's get back to what I was talking about earlier about lesbian aunts caring for um, children that aren't their own. So Star Wars has two examples Another one is in a short story from the original From a Certain Point of View um, collection of short stories um, called Laina that I will talk about in a later video. Um, so these two examples are where ants are perfect mothers to people's children when they can no longer keep them safe or care for them. But they don't have children of their own. So it feels like they can't have children of their own. Even Moff Delia Moores, who was married, doesn't have children of her own. So it's a little weird. And it, it bothers me a little bit. Um, so it's like lesbians can be altruistic to the nth degree, but can't be self-preserving through having their own offspring. And maybe that's more of a positive thing. Um, I, I really should look at the positives of it. 
But that stereotype just gets to me. That stereotype that gay people can't adopt or procreate and build their own families. They have to instead be ever available to take care of the children of straight folks. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all because gay people can have um, children of their own. They can have their own families, build their own families. Um, but this this is a, a, I have to admit, a super positive lens through which gay couples can be viewed by saying that they are still fit to be parents and are in fact even the first choice of straight people when they need help in caring for their children. So I do like that. It's a very positive representation of how people view queer people. So I like that. Um, so comment down below what you think about that whole issue, about uh, them not having their own children, about them caring for children that aren't their own, um, and, and that sort of thing. So remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Alia Morgan, and peruse my blog at the Stars Review blogspot.com. New content will be arriving next Sunday at 6 p.m. Central. May the Force be with you.